everybody, it's Joe from greenlightsound.com and today we've got another mixing tip courtesy of Spike Stent and this one's about compressing drum room mics and the specific hardware unit that Spike Stent uses is the TG12413 which is an old Abbey Road EMI compressor limiter that's been reissued by Chandler Limited in hardware form, really cool unit. Now the UAD and Softube version of that specific unit are very cool and do the same thing, but we can get a really inexpensive version of that within the Waves Abbey Road Studios TG mastering chain. And you can see the limiter right here is the TG12413, a copy of that exact unit here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually listen to these drum room mics all together. I'll solo up the drum room, and here's the sound of our four individual room tracks combined. And it's comprised of four different tracks. I've got a mono cymbal close track here. Stereo close mics on the room. Stereo far mic. and then a tiny mic, kind of like a crush mic. And all combined, they get us this sound. Which is actually a nice drum room sound. But we can do a little better with this processing from Spike Stent. So the first thing we do is engage the compressor section here. You want to set your recovery time to one or two not three, four, five, six. These are shorter release times on one or two. You also want to set the compression style here to original, not modern or limit. This is the old original TG12413. And then you kind of just dial this in, the ratio knob, until you get the amount of compression you want. Then we'll have to dial back the makeup gain a bit. I like to start with the recovery on two. Let's try it. Bypass it on and off now. It just really makes the whole room hyped and really big sounding. Now you can see what happens if I move the recovery knob to three, four, five, or six, what it does to the sound. So those longer release times don't really cut it for this type of compression. We want to leave it on one or two. I'm going to stick with two for now. I keep bypassing it on and off to make sure I'm sort of level matching in and out because this will put out a lot of output and we don't want to have too much gain coming out of this channel. So the next step would be to hear the entire drum mix by itself without this room mic happening. So what I'm going to do is bring the room sub fader right here, which is all four of these rooms combined into this one collection track. I'm going to bring that all the way down and I'm going to dial it in as the drum mix plays. So if you take a look at the mute at the top of the channel now, you'll see it mute on and off as it's playing and how much energy is lost from the drum mix when the room mics being crushed are out of here. And we can dial in as much or as little as we want. We can push the fader way hot. A giant drum sound or dial it way back. So just for comparison's sake, I'll jump over to the UAD Chandler Limited, Zener Limiter, 
which is a copy of the hardware version. Now this one's set up a little bit differently. It doesn't have the exact same controls as the original. It's kind of a hybrid of a couple compressors. So I'm just gonna throw it on limit. I have my fast attack and release going and I drove the input, pulled back the output. Here's what we get. Just on the rooms by itself, here's what it sounds like. If you really want to crush it, you have to leave it on limit. So it's another alternative if you want this style of compression, but the cheapest version that sounds pretty good is the TG12413 that's included in the TG mastering chain from Waves. So there it is, spike stents, drum room compression, using a really inexpensive plugin to add some hype, some energy, some excitement to your drum tracks, and just bring an overall energy to the full drum mix. If you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comment section down below. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already, so we can keep you in the loop as to what's coming up next, and I'll see you in the next one.